Crime plan is a very comprehensive plan for the city of Baltimore. It's not about the status quo. It's about moving our city forward. For too long, we've bounced between community-oriented police policing and zero-tolerance policing. But we haven't had policing that focuses on a mission with real results. The police department takes its lead from the mayor. And I will give them a clear mission and the tools to achieve that goal. I think the interim mayor is more so interested in the status quo right now. Uh, hasn't put out a real plan of uh, fighting crime. Not too long ago, the interim mayor put out her plan. This isn't a plan, it is a publicity stunt. And if you have any doubt, look at the third slide. It reminds her to consistently repeat three things. As I said, it's a publicity stunt. I've got a message for the interim mayor. Crime in Baltimore won't be reduced by sound bites or rehashing old ideas. The people deserve and the people demand something more. The first part of the plan is that we're going to hire 300 additional police officers that are sorely needed in our city. Right now, the interim mayor can't tell you what the current staffing level is. Her budget says there are 3,200 officers, but the police department says there are 2,900 to 3,000 officers. Whatever the number, it's too low. We're also going to make sure that we establish an I-95 interdiction task force that's going to help curtail the drugs, but it's also going to work with other law enforcement agencies throughout our region. On drugs, we're going to attack the supply and the demand. Just locking up addicts is not the answer. One of the things we're going to do is cut off all points of entry for drugs by reestablishing the I-95 task force. This is made up of federal, state, and local law enforcement and will help stop drugs before they enter our city in the first place. Baltimore can no longer afford a turn down assistance, can no longer afford to turn down assistance from other jurisdictions to stop drugs from entering our city. When it comes to gangs, we're going to refocus the mayor's office of criminal justice to deal with and focus on gangs. As a council, I supported the Maryland Gang Protection Act, Prosecution Act of 2007 because it takes a three-pronged approach to fighting gangs. Getting parents involved, educating our children, and enforcing the law. As mayor, we will move away from the piecemeal strategy that is currently in place in stopping gangs. We will use the Mayor's Office of Criminal Justice to build a coherent, unified strategy to fight gangs. We also want to make sure that we go into our schools to educate our children about gangs, to prevent our children from joining gangs. When our children begin to start entering our gangs, we want to quickly intervene, and we also want to enforce. We want stronger laws to enforce. A few weeks ago, after rolling out our crime plan, the interim mayor called another press conference to say she was now outraged at the latest wave of gang violence, and she blamed it on just a few thugs. That is not right. First, we need to know if it's just a few thugs, why aren't they rounded up? Secondly, that's reactive, not proactive. And the violence is going on every day. So why the newfound outrage? It just looks and sounds like the interim mayor is more interested in press conferences and so-called emergency plans than truly changing things for the better. We want to fully fund the witness protection unit in the state's attorney's office. Currently, under the interim mayor, we have not had that program fully funded. We have to encourage our citizens to come forward, and we have to stop this culture of stop snitching. Once we start doing that, we'll start to have a lot more cooperation between the police, law enforcement agencies, and the community. But more importantly, we will restore the trust between the community and the police. I want a city where the police and the community work together to fight crime, because that is what works. There's a lot more in the plan including increasing community involvement, reducing the cycle of crime, and eliminating, eliminating nuisance properties. Because if we're going to reduce crime in Baltimore and change our city for the better, 
we need a comprehensive total approach. As I travel this city, and I hear over and over from citizens from all over Baltimore, black, white, rich, poor, that we need to do something about crime, and we need to improve our schools, public safety and education are two foundations of a great city. And that is why I have laid out comprehensive plans on both. The interim mayor tries to tell us that things aren't getting better. The fact is, we are slipping back. Tonight, when you watch the national news and you hear about Baltimore, it won't be about our great museums and parks. It will be about the sweeping violence in our city. A violence with seemingly no end in sight. We are slipping back. But the interim mayor is satisfied with the status quo. She's got other priorities. 